So how many items do we have covered? We have covered basic, we have covered bonus, we have covered commission, we have covered allowances, we have covered perquisites. Now the sixth item is LTC. Friends, leave travel concession is the amount given by the employer so that you can enjoy the vacations with your family and friends. You can go to any part of India, but the best part is you are entitled to exemption under section 10.5. Exemption under 10.5. So there's a formula for that. Whatever the remaining amount you're going to get, that is taxable LTC. And this will be going to your gross salary. For example, LTC amount is 50,000. An exempt amount is 20,000. 30,000 will be shown under gross salary. The best part of LTC is you're getting an exemption. Now, seventh, seventh item of gross salary, which I'm going to discuss is medical facilities. Seventh item of gross salary, which I'm going to discuss is medical facilities. Friends, medical facilities are covered under proviso to 17.2. If the treatment is done in a government hospital, if the treatment is done in the employer hospital, if the treatment is done in a government approved hospital, local authority hospital, or in a CCIT approved hospital, commis chief commissioner of income tax, it is exempt. Yes, you don't have to pay a single rupee tax on the benefit, the exempt perk is it. But other, it is fully taxable. Yes, repeating again, repeating again. If the employer is incurring expenditure in the five hospital which I talked is exempt. Whether the expenditure of one crore, it is exempt. But your treatment is not in the five places, other places, and the kharcha is borne by the employer, it will be taxable in your hands. Like a family doctor or a non approved hospital, even a rupee one is incurred by the employer, rupee one taxable in your hands. But mind you, the expenditure on medical facility should be on the employee or family member. If a non family member treatment is done by the employer, fully taxable in the hands of the employee. Let's come to eighth perquisite. Oh, sorry, eighth item of gross salary that is known as retirement benefits. I've shifted from nine to eight retirement benefits. Once you leave job, you're going to get retirement benefits. Jeevan ke saad bhi mili cheeze, jeevan ke baad bhi mili. Jeevan does not mean death, nokri ke baad bhi. For example, is one is gratuity. Once you leave service, employer is going to give you gratuity. Gratuity is a lump sum amount given by the employer for past and meritorious service. The best part is you're going to get an exemption under 1010. Whatever the amount is exempt, under 1010, reduce that amount and the remaining amount will be covered under gross salary. Secondly, you're getting a pension and pension again is entitled to 1010A exemption. But that pension should be a lump sum pension. If it is a regular pension, monthly pension, there is no exemption from it. If the pension is a lump sum pension, you're going to get an exemption under 1010A. It is a regular pension, fully taxable, fully taxable. Third is leave salary. Friends, leave salary is the chutia or the holidays which were given by the employer and you did not take. Yes, you are a workaholic, not an alcoholic. You are a workaholic and you say, Ki bhai, I'll not take holidays. The employer aggregates those holidays and give cash. That is not leave salary. The best part is, you are entitled to 1010 AA exemption. Friends, employer throws you out of the organization with the love. That is VRS. Employer throws you out of the organization with the love. VRS. He gives an option to you. Whether you want to leave the organization, you leave. And you get an exemption under 1010C. 1010C. VRS exemptions are under 1010C. That's a lump sum amount, subtract tendency, remaining amount under gross salary. And last but not the least, provident fund. 
provident fund that is a piggy bank maintained by the government for you in which the employer and the employee contributes every year certain amounts are exempt and basically the lump sum amount is also exempt under section 1011 and section 1012 there are certain conditions to it we'll discuss as and when we meet again so provident fund amounts are exempt under 1011 and 1012 these are also more or less so did you notice one thing all the retirement benefits are some or other exempt so they are not liable to pay tax on the entire amount certain amount will be deducted once you retire so you can live the retirement life peacefully don't worry about paying taxes because certain amount will be reduced and friends this was the eighth item and the ninth item which is not covered under the eighth is known as profits in lieu of salary the ninth item of gross salary is known as profits in lieu of salary which includes all the miscellaneous things which the employer gives you which are not covered under eight items this is defined under 173 so friends one to nine items which i just talked about is known as gross salary out of which certain things were subtracted certain things were not subtracted now you deduct three injection 161a which is maximum 40000 this is a standard deduction this is a maximum 40000 this has been increased to 50000 from assessment year 2021 for assessment in 1920 it will be 40000 standard deduction earlier two years ago it was not there it has been introduced or or uh, reintroduced for the salaried people whatever gross salary they have they can reduce 40000 this is basically to cover their expenses expenses 16 to which i just talked about that was entertainment allowance deduction entertainment allowance deduction which i told you maximum how much how much i told you 5000 and one more injection you are going to get from gross salary that is 163 and that is employment tax as per the constitution if you are working in a state where the state government levies the employment tax so this tax is don't, does not exceed more than 2500 per annum so it's not a big pain you can just whatever you are paying as employment tax you can reduce maximum is 2500 but under the income tax act whatever the amount you pay whether for the last year or the this year or in advance you pay this year you can get a deduction and the remaining amount is known as taxable salary so friends taxable salary journey comes to an end how we have to compute nine items whatever the exemptions have been given by the government we compute that we take three injections 40000 or 50000 from assessment year 2021 entertainment allowance deduction of rupees 5000 and employment tax deduction of more or less 2500 rupees which the constitution empowered the state government to levy clear now let's come our attention to the second head of income that is house property second head of income friends that is house property come let's understand what is this house property and what were the sections involved i told you what were the sections involved 22 to 27 friends what is the requirement for taxing income under house property let me know what is the requirement for taxing income under the house property what is the prerequisite for taxing and in what was the prerequisite for taxing income under the salary employer employee relationship and what is the requirement for taxing income under the house property tell me yes you can come out of the screen and tell me you will meet me in person there ha huh? sir we are not shaktiman we cannot come out of the screen but try na no chal so you are making fun of us no no i am just joking house property what is the prerequisite for taxing income under house property building ka malik you are owner of a building but second thing also told you not using the building for commercial purpose if it is a factory go down showroom office clinic then the building will not be covered under house property now i'm going to give you the magic formula for taxing income under the house property you want that formula to spin like a shakti man do a spin 
then i'm going to give you the formula so you have done that spin now let's do it house property income first of all find out the municipal value of the building municipal value for example is given like 3 lakhs this is i have assumed but is our municipal value friends municipal value uh, is the value determined by the local authorities to levy house tax every building in india is subject to a house tax by the government by the local government i say municipal corporation so they levy house tax on the building based on certain value and that value is known as municipal value then find fair rental value sir what is fair rental value friends fair rental value is the market rent of the building whatever the rent of the building is prevailing in the market prevailing in the market this you can know from a property dealer or pan wala is going to tell you ki i need a 3 bhk flat on rent what is the general rent in that area so you can go to a person in that area or shop owner or a or a uh, pan wala or a property dealer of that area he'll tell you ki bhai itna area ka rent ye chal raha hai us jagah pe so maan lijiyega that is 4 lakhs comment says take the higher of the two take the higher of the two so what is the higher amount tell me 4 lakhs you can do that 4 lakhs now you compute another value that will be given the question that is standard rent that is standard rent maan lijiye assume standard given a 3 lakh 50 now sir what is standard rent friends standard rent is the maximum rent which the owner can realize from a defaulting tenant your tenant is a is a beshram person he stops paying rent to you what do you do you want to kill him no you want to go to the jail so you want to file a case in the court the court will give or direct the tenant to pay standard rent only the standard rent is the rent which the tenant can give you maximum amount as directed by the court so this is 350 we take the lower of the two we take the lower of the two and the lower of the two is known as expected rent so friends expected rent is 350 sir what is expected rent this is the rent which government expects you are going to get from the property this is like the uh, a teacher is teaching a student and i know how each and every student is how much waters kitne pani mein kitna student i know so i expect ramlal to get 80 marks i expect shamlal to get 90 marks i expect ghanshamlal to score 95 marks i expect but that does not mean you are going to get 90 only you might get 95 or you might get 20 only that by expectation is expected rent now find out what is the actual rent of the building the actual rent comes out to assume kariye 5 lakh rupees common says take the higher yes government says take the higher and the higher amount is 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 5 lakhs and this amount is known as gross annual value gross annual value or we call it gav friend gav is expected rent or actual rent whichever is higher this formula is made by the law not by me i'm explaining to you so don't think who has this ideas government has this ideas my aim is to make it clear to you now subtract municipal taxes out of gross annual value municipal taxes which has been paid by the owner paid by the owner municipal taxes paid by the owner during the previous year for example municipal taxes of 50000 were paid by the owner during the previous year municipal taxes of 50000 was paid by the owner now you subtract municipal taxes what do you get net annual value net annual value and this is 4 lakh 50000 4 lakh 50000 net annual value 4 lakh 50 now the process is completed no the process has just begun oh gosh you want to die sir net annual value the process has begun now what do you do from net annual value you subtract yes 
from net annual value you subtract something what do you subtract from net annual value let me tell you net annual value is 450000 now you subtract 30% under section 24a friend what is 24a this is a standard deduction remember the salary people got a deduction of 40000 you are getting a deduction of 30% the salary people got a standard deduction of 40000 or 50000 from the coming year but these people the rent owners the owners of the building who are getting rent they can subtract 30% whether repair expenditure or the marammat or the painting expenditure is less or more you getting a flat 30% this is like the prasad in a mandir in a temple whether you want more prasad or less but aapko utna milega pandit ji jitna haath mein pandit ji ke aa gaya you want more sorry you want less sorry jitna diya utna hi milega So this thirty percent. So what is thirty percent of four lakh fifty? It is one lakh thirty five thousand. Not a bad amount. So you can subtract one lakh thirty five thousand from your NAV for your repair and maintenance, and then you subtract section twenty four B. Then you subtract section twenty four B. Sir, what is this, friend? This is interest on housing loan. Interest on housing loan. Government allows people. to take loan for purchase construction repair renovation reconstruction government allows people to take loan for purchase construction repair renovation reconstruction of house property and subtract the interest out of that house in a way government is promoting loans for construction purchase repair renovation reconstruction of house in a way infrastructure sector is being promoted why you take a loan what will you do with the loan you want to purchase a house so the seller is going to sell the house hai na or it is the person is going to construct the house for you so you are taking a loan for that the cement will be sold in the market the saria hai na labor will be employed so if if an economy we want to give focus to the economy or we go, we going to give impetus to the economy we need to build the housing sector Indian economy has been slowing last four five years because the housing sector is slowing. If the housing sector picks up, the economy will pick up because twenty thousand things are used in a house, from a hardware to the software or pachas type ka hazar chizas me use hoti hai. So if the government is giving you the benefit, you take a loan for the housing purposes. Whatever the interest is, you can subtract it from your NAV. So. Interest on housing loan. This is a long calculation to it. Assume, let's assume this is one lakh rupees. Now your taxable income, friends. Now your taxable income is four fifty minus two thirty five. This will be two uh, two lakh fifteen thousand. I'm very poor in maths. Please look at it. So two thirty five, three thirty five, four thirty five, and two fifty. Yes. so your taxable house property income will be your taxable house property income will be 215 so this is the magic formula for calculation of income under the house property can you give me a brief recap municipal value or fair rental value whichever is high then compare it with the standard rent whichever is low that is known as expected rent you compare the expected rent with 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 tell me tell me with actual rent whichever is higher is known as gav you subtract municipal taxes from gav it becomes nav from nav you subtract 24a 30% flat deduction and then you subtract 24b so it becomes taxable house property income now i'm going to focus my discussion on 24b yes on 24b the interest on housing loan the interest on housing loan if it is for a let out property if it is for a let out property it is 100% whatever the interest is you can get a deduction of 100% but if the interest on housing loan is for a residential property is for a residential property then the maximum deduction is 30000 
maximum deduction is thirty thousand, or if you fulfill certain conditions, the deduction becomes two lakhs. If you certain fulfill certain conditions, the deduction becomes two lakhs, because the residential property NAV is nil. Net annual value is nil. Whereas under let out property income is taxable. So government is promoting more or less the let out properties because they pay tax to the government. Let out properties pay tax to the government. Whereas the residential property with in which you are living, you're not incurring any income. You're not in. You're not gaining any income. Once you're not gaining any income, we say NAV is nil. NAV. What was NAV? GAV minus municipal taxes. So no need to do the long story under residential properties. The residential properties are those properties in which we are living along with the family. Yes, the NAV of such house will be nil, but you are going to get a deduction of 24B. This deduction of 24B interest on housing loan. How much deduction you are going to get? Maximum, maximum 30,000 or maximum 2 lakhs. There are certain conditions. If you fulfill, the deduction becomes two. Two lakhs. If you don't fulfill the deduction, if you don't fulfill the conditions, the maximum deduction will be thirty thousand. So remind, rem, uh, you should remember, housing loan interest is for a residential property thirty thousand or two lakhs, and for a let out property it is hundred percent. One more thing which I need to tell you for a house property. Friends, if you own More than one house for self-residential purpose, friends. You own more than one house for self-residential purpose. Log it was a ghar nii hote rehne ke liye, ek chhat nii hoti. And you got more than one house. Government says very bad. You are getting more than one house. Now government says only one house to be used for self-residence. Its NAV will be nil. Only one house NAV will be nil, and the other houses, other houses which are for self-residence, they will become taxable. Yes, government says both house you are using for self-residential purpose. Only one house NAV will be nil, and the other house shall be deemed to be let out. Other house shall be deemed to be let out. Now there is a change also from assessment year 2021. Now you get two houses as nil. Otherwise, there was only one house as nil, and other house was deemed to be let out. But now, for with effect from assessment year 2021, now you can enjoy the benefit of residential on two houses, on two houses, and the third house will be deemed to be let out. This you remember is given under section 23.4. This is given under section 23.4. Remember, this is a good section. We say so. Next. <coughs> write down concept of unrealized rent concept of unrealized rent friends unrealized rent is that rent unrealized rent is that rent which the owner cannot realize the tenant has become a uh, badmash is not giving you the rent sir but give me an example for example you let out the property on 10000 per month For twelve months, what is the total rent? Tell me, one lakh twenty thousand, and two months rent, employee or, or the tenant is refusing to give twenty thousand. He says, Gupta ji, I'll not give it to you. Iri choti ka dam lagalo, band bajalo. I'll not give you twenty thousand. Maybe he gussa hai mujhse kisi baat pe. <coughs> so what is the rent I have received? Tell me, what is the rent I have received? One lakh twenty thousand rent. He is refusing to give me. Now tell me the chart. Remember the chart: municipal value, fair rental value, actual rent. Now tell me what shall be the actual rent? Yes, government is very kadardan or helpful in this case. Government said take AR figure as one lakh. So when we compare ER with AR, and the AR has an unrealized rent, you reduce the unrealized rent. From actual rent and remaining amount, you compare with ER. So this is a beneficial thing or a disadvantageous thing? Beneficial thing. Whatever the rent has become bad debt, 
irrecoverable, unrealizable, reduce it. So you're not going to pay tax on that. Now, another thing, another thing. After four years, you filed a case in the court because the person didn't give you 20,000 and the court said, in 25, 26 previous year, the court says the tenant has to give 20,000. You recover it back. You recover 20,000 back. Now this 20,000 recovery will be taxable. This is known as recovery of unrealized rent. This is known as recovery of unrealized rent. And this unrealized rent will be taxable under section 25A. Under section 25A. So what I'm going to tell you, what I've told you, just repeat once more. If you have given the property on a rent of 10,000 per month for 12 months, your rent becomes 120. Fine. If the tenant was very cooperative person, he would have given you the entire rent. You would have shown actual rent as 120. But if the tenant is not cooperating or playing games with you and avoiding payment of rent, government says you can reduce the unrealized rent from the actual rent. The bad debt wala rent hai, which is not given by the employer, not given by the tenant, reduce it. And you need not pay tax. So your actual rent will be treated as one lakh. Now, after three, four years, because you have filed a court case, the court decides, decides that the tenant has to give back the rent. Now, the tenant gives you 20,000. Now, this 20,000 will be taxable as areas of rent under section 25A. Areas of rent under section 25A. But best part is 30% deduction. 30% deduction shall be allowed. 30% deduction shall be allowed. So what will be the taxable amount after 30% reduction? Friend, that will be 14,000. 14,000 will be taxable under section 25A in previous year 25-26. Fine. Now, one more thing in house property I need to tell you. That is section 27. One more thing I need to tell you. Under house property head, that is section 27 which is concept of deemed owner, which is concept of deemed owner in which, in which friends, there are certain cases in which a person is not the legal owner, but for the income tax purpose, he is deemed as the owner. For example, husband gives a house to his wife. The wife is not treated as the owner for the purpose of house property. The husband is similarly, a house is given to the minor. Minor is not treated as the owner for house property. You are treated as the owner. You are owning a flat in the society. The society is not treated as the owner. You are treated as the owner. So there are certain cases under which you are treated as the owner and house property had become taxable in your hands. So friends, in this video, what did we learn? We learned how to make five heads. When is income chargeable under which head? Fine. What is the reason? for making five heads, what is the logic? Then we learned salary income. What was the magic formula? Gross salary minus three injections, taxable salary. And we learned house property magic formula. A long formula, sir, neen aagai. We felt like sleeping. I also felt like sleeping, but we understood. So friends, in this lecture, we learned how to make heads, taxable salary, and taxable house property. In the next lecture, we're going to study about how to form business professional income, capital income and other sources of income. Have a nice time. Thank you.